Hello. My name is Yuma. And I'm so excited to explain about Gainey's conditions of learning to you. If you've realized that teaching someone playing piano takes a different skill set than teaching them algebra. Or if you've ever started a lesson by gaining the learner's attention or elicit their prior knowledge that they've already learned. Then you've used the principles outlined by Robert Mills Ganey without even realizing it. Who is Robert Ganey? Let me tell you. Robert Ganey was an American educational psychologist. He was born in August 21, 1916. He is best known for his conditions of learning. Gagne pioneered the science of instruction during World War II when he worked with the Army Air Corps training pilots. In 1958, Ganey became a professor of psychology at Princeton University and conducted many studies. During this time, he went on to develop series of studies and works that simplified and explained what he and others believed to be a good instruction. It was in 1965 that Ganey first published his seminal work The Conditions of Learning. According to Ganey, different instruction is required for different learning outcomes. Ganey's theory asserts that there are several different types or level of learning. Furthermore, the theory implies that each different type of learning calls for different types of instruction. Two main components of Ganey's conditions of learning are the five categories of learning and nine events of instruction. Ganey realized that a learner memorize and recite the seven continents on the earth is a different learning outcome than having a learner learn negotiation and influence and leadership skills. Therefore, he created the five categories of learning, which is a framework for all the different types of learning across many instructional settings. The first category is verbal information. This is simply memorizing and reciting things, like an example, what are the seven warning signs of heart attack, or list and order the steps that are required to operate a machine. With the next category, intellectual skills, it's not just knowing what but it's knowing how. For an example, how to do multiplication, addition and so on. The third, cognitive strategies, are the capabilities that allow us to manage our own psyche and learning processes, telling us how to learn and how to remember and how to solve problems. The next category of learning is motor skills. Example of motor skills are like playing a guitar, driving a car. Finally, the attitudes are the outcomes of learning that influence the individual's choices of personal action. Internal and external conditions are required for each type of learning. For instance, for cognitive strategies to be learned, there must be an opportunity for problem solving. To learn attitudes, the learner must be exposed to credible role model. Let's move on to the nine events of instruction, which Ganey defined as any set of events external to the learner, which are designed to support the internal processing of learning. Ganey's theory is widely used. According to Ganey, learning occurs in a series of learning events, and each event must be accomplished before the next in order for learning to take place. The first step is to gain attention. To give the learners a stimulus to begin instruction, this can be done by starting with a story. Step number two is to inform the learners of the objectives, telling the learner what they will be able to do as a result of the instruction. This can be in a more formalized objective, or it can be something very simple that the audience will understand. The next step is to stimulate. Recall of prior knowledge, it's easier for the learners to learn new skills when they are able to connect them to what they already know. This can be done as a verbal review 
or having the learners create a mind map of previous knowledge. The next step is to present the material. Present the content in different ways with different modes or activities. Step 5 is to provide guidance to the learner. Providing both structure and guidance to the learner. The next step is to elicit performance. Students should be given the opportunity to be able to practice and apply their skills. The most effective method is for the students to be able to practice their newly acquired behavior skills or knowledge on their own under guidance from the instructor. The next step is to provide feedback. And the feedback should be specific rather than general. Tell them why they are doing a good job or specific guidance on what to improve. Step 8 is to assess performance. Evaluate the learners to determine if the lesson has been learned and to provide general progress information. This is also a good time where the students can determine content areas that they still need to master. And finally, step 9 is to enhance retention and transfer. This can be done by informing the learners about similar problem situations. Review the lesson, provide additional practice, or give the students the opportunity to apply their new skills. I hope my explanation has made you understand the Gainey principles. <laughs>